Our immune system is designed to fight any disease, including cancer. It starts in the lymphatic system. Our lymph nodes produce tumor-infiltrating leukocytes, or T-cells for short. One method T-cells use to differentiate healthy cells from cancer cells is a genetically coded receptor called Program Cell Death Protein 1, also known as PD-1. When PD-1 sees its counterpart PD-L1 in a healthy cell, it ignores it. When it detects a missing PD-L1 in the abnormal cancer cell protein, it destroys it. So, why does our immune system allow cancer to exist? Cancer cells can hide from T cells using a false identity, causing the T cell to let the cancer pass. Applying heat to the cancer tumor can boost the immune system to recognize the invasive cancer cells. Heating a cancer tumor to 42 degrees Celsius, considered fever temperature, will stress the cellular function of an already poorly developed cell structure, causing cell death. Healthy cells recover quickly from this stress effect. During cell death, cancer cells express heat shock proteins and the release of antigens, molecules that provide specific information about the invading cancer cell. And they can be used by the immune system to unmask the hiding cancer cells. Dendritic cells scoop up these antigen particles and return them to the nearest healthy lymph node. Heat shock proteins chaperone the cell production of the newly evolved T cells that can now detect the once hidden cancer cell. Not only will the T cell go to work killing the cancer tumor, but move throughout the body identifying stray cancer cells that lead to metastases, stopping the spread of that specific cancer. Heating aids the process by increasing blood flow to the tumor, allowing more T cells to join the fight. Hypothermia has long been an adjunct to surgery by shrinking the tumor and chemotherapy and or radiotherapy by sensitizing the tumor and boosting the effective dose. With the discovery of immune modulation, we see a bright future for hyperthermia as an adjunct to immunotherapy.